think about the benefit to, uh, for, for lack of a better expression, of, of the new birth. Where else are you going to get a new heart other than from Jesus? Amen. Where else are you going to get forgiveness of sins other than from Jesus? Where else are you going to get the knowledge of God other, from, other than from mm -hmm. Jesus? There's, th these, are, these are things that are exclusive to Him. No, nope, you can't get them from any other source, and only the people that come to Him get them. Mm -hmm. Jesus doesn't give them far off. Jesus works where He is. Amen. He doesn't. He doesn't work uh, Amen. by. Uh, he doesn't work in second person and third person. Somebody might say, "Well, he he works through other people." Yes, he does, but oh, the credit's his. Amen. The credit is goes is that Jesus did it, not the one he used that Amen. did it. So these are some of the benefits of being of being close to, to Jesus because He works where He is. There are some things that can be laid aside in the good fight of faith, but there are some things that we have to be delivered from. Oh, yeah. Some things Amen. that can't be just laid aside. There, there are some things that can't be just uh, just worked out with fear and trembling. There are, there are of course, things that, that we have to lay aside. The Lord gives us those things. The Lord leaves some things in the arena uh, of yeah. working out Amen. ourselves. Uh, with fear and trembling, but not everything's like that. We don't we don't lay aside our sins. We have to be delivered from them. Amen. Mm -hmm. We can't just be we can't just lay aside the wicked one. We have to be delivered from it. There are cer certain circumstances that we can't just elude by our own efforts. We have to be delivered from them. And this was the Peter's mother-in-law had one of those situations. Yeah. She couldn't just rise up and lay aside the fever. She couldn't just. Uh, by her own determination, just work out this fever with fear and trembling and leave it on the wayside. She had to be delivered from it. And I do believe that perhaps uh, a, a vast majority of, of uh, spirit, the things in, in the good fight of faith we have to be delivered from. The things that we can perceive to lay aside, I do believe, are the lesser of the things that would beset us. All of the other things the Lord, He delivers us from. Mm hmm and that's what he did to, to uh, Peter's, Peter's mother-in-law. In the, in the world to come, we're going to see, actually, we're going to be able to perceive without any hindrance what it is, actually, that we came through in this world. Yes. Amen. We're going to be able to... We see, it, we see a little bit of it now. It's just like, it, like we just see just the smoke that rises from the battle. We don't really see all the, all the battle. Daniel saw a little bit of it when the angel told him, that the, the prince of the king of Persia came and withstood me 21 days. He saw a little bit of the spiritual warfare, but in the world to come, we're going to see. That's, that's one of the things that's going to uh, redound to the glory of God, is being able to see, actually, with perfect clarity, what the Lord delivered us from. In, in, its, in its fullness, what He delivered us from. Another thing is that to see in this, uh, this parable, or not the parable, in the miracle, is that other people can be blessed because you know Jesus. Say amen. Uh, of course, we, we do conclude that, or I, I do think that Peter's mother-in-law was familiar with Jesus because of Peter and because of, the, of uh, her closest to Peter, Peter's closest to Christ. But the point is, is that she got this blessing because somebody else asked for her. Yeah. Amen. And so what, what should we say to these things? We should be, we should be quick to ask mm -hmm. blessing and ask the Lord to work and do good in the behalf of other people. It's called intercession. It's something that that's, uh, we see a lot in the Scriptures. But also, we should be quick to ask other people to intercede for us. Yes. We should, it's, it's actually pride that would, that would cause a person to, to not ask for, for intercession for themselves. It would either be pride or ignorance, one or the other. But the Lord can bless other people on somebody else's behalf. Uh, that, that opens up a lot of possibilities. Mm -hmm. It does. What, what, if, what if the Lord just limited everything that we got to our prayers and our perceptions? I believe we wouldn't have as much as we do. The Lord blesses people in behalf of someone else, yeah. which is a... Yeah. Well, that, that is actually the, the inner... That is the essence of the Gospel. We're blessed in behalf of Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. A couple other things. What this woman got from Jesus, she used for Jesus. Mm -hmm. Like she immediately gave it back to him. Mm -hmm. yeah. Remember that we see we see this a lot. Yeah. The uh, uh, somebody would would receive something from the Lord, and then they go tell everybody 
they go tell everybody about it. Even mm -hmm. at some some points when Jesus said don't, they still <laughs> went and uh, and published the matter abroad. But I, I believe if we if we don't use for Jesus what we get from Jesus, then Jesus does have the prerogative to take it back. Yes. He's the one that gave it. Yes. And so I do believe that he's able to take it. You remember the ten uh, the ten lepers? That Jesus didn't heal them immediately. He said, go show yourself to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. Yeah. One of them returned to give thanks. And Jesus said, where are the nine? Yeah, have you ever there? thought that, I wonder if those nine were still cleansed when they got to the temple. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they got to keep what they mm -hmm. got, but then didn't go give thanks for it. Mm -hmm. it it's not told us in Scripture. But... The Lord can take what He gives. Yes, he He's can. done it. Yes, He can. He's done it before. So what we get from Jesus, it's only it's only right that we use for Jesus. In fact, that's that is that is a primary purpose for what the Lord gives you is to use for Him, mm -hmm. including our health. One last thing: we must perceive His presence while He is near. Mm. There there are times now. He said, "Lo, I will. I am with you unto the end of the world." Always be with you, never leave you, nor forsake you. But there are times, you know, there are times when we perceive His presence more closely than at other, yeah. than at other yeah. times. We're able to perceive and to know His will more perfectly at some times than other times. Those are the times to ask such things. Mm -hmm. Those are the times when He is near that he'll, he'll, He will work. Mm -hmm. Yes, amen. He, when, when He is entreated of His people... And we ask according to His will. He will hear. He will work. Mm -hmm. He will give good things. But it just uh, we don't want to be of those who have not because they ask not. Amen. Now Jesus passed by a lot of people when He was in the world. He was walking from one city to another city. He didn't. He didn't stay in one one place for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. He was always going from one place to another. So He passed by a lot of people. But when Zacchaeus saw Him pass by, yeah. He got. His presence in his house. When the blind man Bartimaeus, when he perceived that he was passing by, he got his sight healed. Yeah. See, there were some people that capitalized on his presence Amen. when he was when he was passing by. On that, when Jesus was walking on the water, uh, he's, uh, Scripture says he made as though he would pass by. Him. But the apostles called out. They called out to him when he was near the boat. They didn't let him pass by. They called out to him when he was near. And he came to the boat, and that's when he calmed. One of the time that he calmed the storm. Mm -hmm. So let us uh, seek grace from the Lord to know when he is near, that we may entreat him then. Mm -hmm.